Okay, the next up, oh, well, actually, no, currently, we have How Nick's Grew Marketing Team by Garvis. And this is about marketing, and non technical work is all too often an afterthought for developers, or worse, is actually viewed as something like negative. So Rock really wishes this wasn't the case. Having clearly defined problems, audience and strategy should be as important to us as having clean and tested code. So, you know, this is important for Nix, this is important for any project that aims to succeed. And if you're not familiar with Rock, he believes he started using Nix in 2010, and he is a senior engineer at Twig.io, and he did the first Nix sprint in Slovenia in 2013. And yeah, the, the head of the marketing team. So take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, how do I actually know? I don't know. It's not yet, because I don't hear you. Should I continue? OK. Hi, everybody. I think now uh, you can hear me. Okay, so it's a privilege to be give, to be giving you this presentation, uh, and I uh, don't just say this to everybody. I really mean uh, I really mean it. It's uh, and it's for a simple reason. It's because this concept of of a family, belonging, a team, uh, it's personal to me, uh, and it's as much as it's personal to you. Uh, for, in past, I did presentation at meetups, conferences. And there was always that was those presentations were always uh, at conferences of other also great technologies, but it always felt this distance between um, what they do and what I do. So this talk is really special for me, uh, and it, I mean it's really special to uh, to me and. Because I'm talking to an audience that is just like me. <laughs> I feel home here. Uh, so thank you. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about how Nix grew a um, marketing team. And yeah, I was, I was always passionate about getting Nix in hands of other uh, developers, other people, not only developers. So in after I actually moved to Berlin for my first um, uh, Nix job. This was in 2014. Uh, and after one year of experience of working with Nix, I wanted to do this more often. And I went to every meetup. I tried to talk to every developer there in Berlin, and that's a lot of them, uh, and try to convince them to use Nix. Uh, I was, you know, partially successful, and but it always felt that this distance, as I was talking before, and for the reason, um, as it usually happens in Berlin, you go for a kebab with a fellow Nix uh, uh, person, and suddenly you end up uh, organizing an, the the Nix conference. So we organized the Nix conference, and why is that important? Because there I talked about making Nix friendlier for beginners. I thought Nix is great, already in the shape it was, uh, but they, it, I wish I would be able to fix only a few things. And there were a few things that I um, uh, emphasized there. One was the this uh, first contact with, the, with everybody getting to know Nix, which is the installer and the website. Um, and um, yeah, so the installer and the website. Uh, then there was the command line. Um, I think I was a bit too harsh now re-watching the video uh, of Ilko. And, and then also the documentation, right? So already back then, this was clear what we need to do, right? Uh, and I gave a similar talk in 2018 um, while I was um, working at Mozilla and trying to introduce Nix at Mozilla um, and how I actually introduced it at Mozilla and what were the pain points. And I think what, what I remember from, uh, from, um, from that talk was that at the end I said, 
if there is one thing you want that, that we should actually change is actually the website. Because that was the main complaint that I received time and time ago. It all boiled down. It was not the only, but it all boiled down that either they didn't know how to find the documentation. Um, so the website, this entry point was always the problem. Um, and this passion of me trying to introduce Nix to so, so many people, uh, it got me into this really scary place. Um, and <laughs> We call it, some call it marketing, and I, I don't see it anymore as a scary place. Um, but I've quickly found out that many, including my past self, view, have a very negative view of marketing. Uh, it kind of ranges from um, I don't care about, they care about it, and you know, marketing is evil. Uh, and actually, this is for a good reason, uh, because a lot of marketing uh, is especially though that the one we perceive and the one we acknowledge is actually the deceptive one, or at least it feels that way. Um, yeah, and that's not all of the marketing that there is. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it doesn't have to be this way. So in... Uh, in my past, there was uh, I was as I said I was the in the I don't care camp, um, where I didn't care really about marketing that much. Uh, but there was a, like a moment which I want to share with you, which got me over, um, which started the process of me actually thinking a bit differently about marketing. And this was the moment when I encountered this number and fifty nine percent. Um, is the is the 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 percentage of our behavior that is controlled by our subconscious, and that that fascinates me. It's not twenty. I know I knew that there is some subconscious involved in our decision. But I thought it's you know lower. It's not twenty. It's not fifty. It's actually ninety five, and that shocked me. Uh, and this is actually across, this is applicable to every human on the earth. It's not something that it's only depend, depends on where you're from or how good education you have. No, this um, forces uh, that are in our subconscious uh, actually come from evolution. So that's why it is global. And these forces we usually call human behavior. And it's kind of... It, it feels like there is this puppet master and we are the puppets. And that makes, and even, in, and even when we die, our children come and this puppet master controls them, the same puppet master. And this is very, I, I felt very uneasy. I, I thought I'm a rational person. I thought I'm an in control person. Uh, and that put everything uh, on, the, that turned everything on the head. So, but on the same time, I acknowledge that this is a powerful, um, powerful knowledge. And, you know, with everything powerful, you can use it in a good and a bad way. And marketing, especially the, the, the advertisement, I, I guess that's where the, the evil part comes from. <laughs> they take advantage of this, right? And I said, it doesn't have to be evil. Um, I'll try to give an example of good and bad marketing, or at least hope I don't, I don't mess this up. But let's say, you know, you go on a first date. Uh, you don't put just the first T-shirt that you find. You actually put a bit better. You put something better on yourself. And just tr you're trying to present yourself in the best light possible. And that's already some sort of marketing, <laughs> so to say, right? Because you don't want to lie. You don't want to deceive. But you want to put your best. Because in our human nature is that we, we take our, the first, um, first impression really seriously. You know that if you are not, uh, at least in school where I went, if you're not good in the first semester, this, this is where you get the label for the rest of the, of, the, of the time in the school. So first impression is really important. And there are many more other human behavior uh, things that we need to be uh, take into the account. 
And even before, I'd like to consider myself a problem solver. I would like to see a problem and try to solve it. And uh, the problem of, ado uh, of uh, adopting or growing the adoption of NIX uh, is a, is, was a problem that I couldn't solve. Like, how can we solve it? And this, this, is what, this is one of the things that put me on the path of marketing. And you know, many books after and many, talk, many talks to people and so on. Uh, this led me this year to create a marketing team. Uh, I mean, I was only the person to announce it and then others joined. But this was important because uh, uh, you cannot really do the whole marketing process by yourself. You need to be a team, especially if you want to do this in continuous way. So, but before we continue, that's actually really important. I'd like to also discuss what marketing is like it's I know it's a bit of a uh, going off the rails, but I think I didn't address what marketing is. And one of the many complaints I received when talking about marketing is that the language that marketeers use uh, is unfriendly um, <laughs> or very foreigner, right? So and that is because a lot of resources that you can read uh, on marketing, and there are many, uh, are not are written in a language where they mention customers and sales and you know uh, different things. But there are not many books written about marketing on open source. Actually, I didn't find I found any. Um, there are a few blog posts, there are a few presentations, but on this topic, there are not many, not many, or at least not specifically mentioning the marketing, uh, but kind of going on, uh, taking different aspects of it. Mm. So uh, I took, uh, I composed a few definitions because there is also not one definition of marketing, uh, but I took a few definitions. Um, I kind of tried to combine it and I, I hope and translate it, of course, because uh, I don't want to call our new Nix users customers. Um, and I don't want to talk about sales, but for the purpose of marketing team, the Nixos marketing team, I think we can say that marketing is a non-coding activity that drives adoption. Um, so everything non-coding that will drive adoption is in is in area of marketing um, or it's touching the area. It's most likely marketing is not the only uh, marketing team will not be the only person, uh, the only uh, contributor to this, but it's if there is nobody like this needs to be done. So I think this kind of answered. And that's also the reason why I give the marketing team the marketing name, uh, because it's all about the adoption. Uh, and importantly, I'll, I'll say it again, there is a good and bad way how to do marketing. I don't want to deceive people. I don't want to put bad ads or things like this. I just want to give Nix a, f a chance. I want to prepare Nix to be, to, to dress well Nix for its first date, basically, right? Um, so with that out of the way, um, I'd like to take you on a journey what we did in the last um, six months. So or it's a bit more, but in the, yeah, the last mile milestone, and before that, I'd just like to thank that this was not only my work, uh, but there was like a, there is a team behind it, right? Uh, you probably met it if you follow the, our minutes that we try to publish as soon as we have the meeting and have the time to write it. But uh, importantly, for each of these milestones, we have a certain goal that you try to focus on. And from there, we define uh, certain tasks. And for the, our first goal, uh, so this was actually our, <laughs> our, f f our first few meetings was what are we actually going to do at marketing, right? Uh, and there were a few uh, ideas thrown around. Um, but our goal that we kind of decided on was we need to change Nixos.org. We need to make it look a modern and maintain project uh, and ready to be used in production. And we kind of develop a three-phase thing, three-step thing that we will follow. And first is 
we will we need to define in order to do any kind of redesign or even kind of have any marketing talk you need to know your audience and the use cases in case of the nix and xos and here i want to emphasize actually uh, that we only define uh, these primary use cases for nixos.org nothing changes in the code itself it's only what we will put higher or what will have a higher pr priority over other things the next thing is you cannot redesign if you don't do if you don't uh, have a content and structure of the website uh, usually this comes together although in the in our current case where we are redesigning the existing page we can already adjust the content uh, with ideas th uh, that will drive the redesign later on so um, we did that and we redesigned and the last step which is still a bit in the progress uh, it's the redesign of nixos.org. So the actual writing the CSS. So going back to number one, uh, what was this well decided? Um, not, so first on this part, nothing is really decided for a long term, which each year we will reevaluate whether our audience and use cases are still valid and adjust. Uh, so one aspect of marketing team, we need to listen to everybody. And that's why we put all the minutes out and we do listen to the, uh, to the feedback you give us. Um, uh, we might work on it a bit slower in a different pace, in a different order, but we do listen to it. We do take it into account. So our primary use case that we put now was um, for Nix, we use uh, the primary use case for Nix uh, so the main audience for the website is beginners and decision makers. So the one who de decide whether uh, the Nix is actually good enough to be used in their company. And the primary use case for Nix is development environment. Um, kind of to translate it to, to the Nix developers, this means Nix shell, everything around Nix shell. I think uh, it's the most polished solution that we have out there and the most underrated uh, uh, that we don't pr uh, promote enough. And we even have a talk. A lot of talks mention this, how great Nick Shell is. And I think we need to, the, the website needs to reflect this as well. And the use case for NixOS, um, the use case for NixOS is uh, cloud ops uh, or cloud deployments, building cloud images, something along those ways, uh, along those lines. and. This will change, I am sure, uh, but we need to pick one. Uh, and I think the building Docker images, building um, EC2 images, it's the most polished solution we currently have. Uh, if this changes, we will be all happy. Like this is something that it's in flux, but this kind of drove the reorganization, especially the landing page, what's on it and what's not, what's at the top of other pages, that all drives it. And um, if you remember, and I welcome you to go on the Wayback Machine or um, timemachine.org and look how the website looked in the beginning of the year. A and then kind of fast forward to today and compare it. Uh, and I think the change is simple. Now, I what we said in the beginning, and I was very cautioned, is that we are not looking to do a perfect redesign and do a perfect change all the time. I think what's more important is that we do the change incrementally and always on the better, and eventually we'll get to the better place. And redesign, what was the goal of the redesign uh, was achieved because we didn't look for a perfect website, perfect design that will be always there forever, but we look for something that will look modern and maintained. Uh, and with the content, we are, I think, yet to provide the, uh, the feeling that this can be used in production, but more on this later. So I think we are ending uh, of the, with the 2009 release happening soon. We are ending this milestone. Uh, and we are partially, we mostly succeeded. Uh, I think we can still do a lot more on being more explicit that this, the Nix and NixOS is actually a tool that is being used in production and others in a uh, visitor can also use it. So I'd like to look for the next uh, period. 
Um, importantly here is uh, uh, that nothing is set in stone because each half a year a group a bit reorganizes and people in the group decide what to work on. But these are, these are some issues that we have in our um, bucket to kind of that we think we should work on. And the goal uh, will be to make onboarding uh, easier. Now we have a website, now we have a base. Uh, now we need to make the whole onboarding experience easier. Uh, and so one of the things is we want to serve fresh cloud images. So each uh, successful uh, evaluation should, uh, NixOS evaluation should push the images to EC2, not only a fresh EC2 image, but we want to expand this to other cloud providers, uh, especially the top three providers, let's say the Google, Azure, and the EC2, right? Um, so at least that, if not more, why not? Um, because if we want to be seen as a cloud, um, uh, uh, really good for cloud building cloud images, they should be, they should be easy to start. Like we have now with the click of a button. Um, there is another idea we have that, uh, I mean, it's a clear idea that we need a language specific tutorial. So on the learn page, if a lot of people come to us and they, you know, I want to use Name, uh, Python with Nix. How do I do this? There should be a visible on the learn page. There should be a visible uh, language. And I thought there were many talks in this um, conference on the Java ecosystem. Um, and I hope this will and um, what is Scala. So I hope you know we need those uh, instructions in one place. Uh, and actually outside the manual, right? Geared towards um, the, the newcomers. Uh, another idea is a prominent Docker support. Um, this is more for the purpose of people trying it out. Uh, using Docker as a vehicle, using other technologies as a vehicle to try out Nix um, will make onboarding much easier. Now, prominently, uh, we can dive deeper after the talk why the current Docker is not good, but we need to make it easier to try Nix. Uh, and Docker might help us there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I want to, uh, my video is here covering this, but expose internal uh, community communi uh, communication. So all the teams we have, how they communicate, what they do, there are many minutes scattered all over the places. Someone GitHub, someone. I want to, we want to bring them and help people who already started using Nix and want to contribute and give them the, the, the roadmap, how and where to go to find what's the, what's being in development currently in Nix, right? So what's the, what's the state of RFCs and things like this, uh, what's been talked about. Uh, next on the what we want to have job section. I think Doman yesterday mentioned you know, this tricycle where you have the industry uh, developers and, uh, you know, everything feeds into in each other. And I think having a, a job section uh, will, well, first make two things. Uh, it will, uh, uh, it will make you, f make, make it easier for you to find <laughs> the next Nick job. And it will also, uh, it also is seen very uh, production ready because everybody that's, you know, adopts Nix will also want to hire. Um, one of the things I already started is actually uh, gathering the success stories and white papers on, you know, and I hope to do many more. And, you know, once I gather at least five, uh, five to you know, five, eight of them, I will actually will open this uh, section on the website where people will see how Nix is used in maybe, you know, really obscure places um, uh, and how they it's being how it's bending the uh, what people think Nix can do, um, and then there is the commercial support. I think everybody will get stuck with Nix, especially in the beginning, and they look for uh, companies to help them. Uh, this is, of course, a bit um, can be a bit um, uh, how do you say controversial thing, but uh, having a list of Nix. Uh, providers that can help you, either personal or companies, in a uh, fair way. And I think emphasis on being fair, right? So everybody should get the same space and so on. I think will bring, uh, will address the production quality 
uh, from the previous uh, milestone that we had. So there is many, many things to work on and not all of them uh, are, you know, what you would assume are um, marketing. So, you know, building fresh images. Um, it, it, there is a lot, there is some coding, although not on Nix itself, but there is some coding and uh, working with infrastructure. So I would welcome you to join us. We are still open for, uh, for another two weeks for, um, oh, something happened. Um, I don't know what happened. But wait, sorry. Maybe I need to re. I'm not sure whether you hear me, but I lost all the connection to the, but I'll try to go f forward with the slides quickly through it. Uh, but as I was already at the end, um, so yeah, so please join us. Um, we are still open for uh, another week. We only uh, invite new people to marketing team for a week. Uh, for every end of each release. Um, uh, so uh, let ping me on IRC. I'm always Garbas on IRC or, or Twitter. Um, or just, um, I think, also on Discourse. So on the end, I'd like to answer just this question. Do we really need uh, to do marketing? I think we do. We need marketing Every successful project needs marketing. And if Nix wants to be successful, we need to do marketing. Marketing is a lot of work. It's uh, not because it's hard, but it's, you know, coordinating all of this, making sure all the images are there. Uh, so don't under underestimate it. Um, and with this, I'll end up. And I hope I see you. Um, Okay, it seems we only have um, <laughs> one, and it's just, it's honestly just like a cheeky comment. I would say it's a good sign that you don't have many questions because you really were very thorough in your presentation. So, okay, I will, I'll read this <laughs> off to you. So how about playing a tree for each person installing NixOS? Uh, sorry, again? How about planting a tree for each person installing NixOS? <laughs> I'm not sure this is gonna help NixOS adoption, but if it does, let's do it. Okay, so on that note, I would like to thank you. I really love the moment, like you mentioned, that we don't have control over like the subconscious. And like with awareness, you can use it to your advantage. Like I personally believe, like at least for myself, I have pretty good hold on my like subconscious communication. And you usually can sort of tell that by how people feel just by meeting you. So yeah. No. Like you. <laughs> no, I find <laughs> it that. I find that actually a lot of times we think we do have uh, control uh, and we most of the time uh, make excuses for our subconscious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's it's good to be aware. I think this is always, uh, uh, once you're aware, you can actually uh, control it, you know, like, and like this field is just enormous and uh, yeah, exactly. I'm always impressed that I didn't know about it. <laughs> Yeah, throughout your talk, you um you basically guide us through um a lot of your awareness on the whole situations and pulling that back into why a marketing team is necessary. So yeah, I would like to thank you for starting this initiative, the marketing team, and doing all this research and just really everything. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. <laughs>